Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and yet again, I am joined here with Flex Shane. All of his links are down below in the description. Make sure you check all of that stuff out. Check out his podcast. It's a very good listen slash watch, whether you're watching it on YouTube or you're just listening to it on the podcast app. So the guy we're going to be talking about in this video is Jalen Rieger. I probably just said it wrong, even though we just practiced saying his name 9,000 yeah. times. Wide receiver out of TCU. Now, we made other videos on C.D. Lamb and Jerry Judy earlier in the week, so make sure you check those out as well. It's going to be a similar format to right here. Now, at TCU, Rieger – in 2019, his junior season, 21 years old, 12 total games, 43 receptions on 93 targets, 611 receiving yards, 23.5 target share in that offense, a 46.20 catch rate, and five total receiving touchdowns. Now, the first thing I want to bring up here is according to player profile or playerprofiler.com, his best comparison, his player comp is Christian Kirk. Now, do you see that or do you disagree? I, I, absolutely. I mean, okay. So one of the, one of the descriptions of Christian Kirk when he was coming out is that he's just, he's a dog, right? He's just like dog with a freaking bone. He, he's the kind of guy that, that will run through a wall for you. And that's the kind of player that I think Jalen Rager is. And mm -hmm. you, uh, you were asking me like what differentiates some of these guys? Like he's just, he's a dog. And where you can see that is just the fact that he does do everything. I mean, he would, uh, he would rush, he would return punts. Um, dude is pretty freaking quick. Uh, he's kind of a Swiss army knife of a player. Mm -hmm. And I think that Jalen Rager is the kind of player that no matter where he gets, where he gets drafted, kind of like a Debo Samuel, he's going to be very, very good for his team. Yeah, for sure. You can see that speed. His burst score on player profiler is in the 99th percentile, 140.4. Mm -hmm. So clearly that's evident according to the stats that he is very fast. Now, yeah. the thing I want to talk about here, we've talked about this in the videos before, but his breakout age. Now, he's 21.3 mm -hmm. years old. And out of all these guys that we have looked at so far, I believe he's the youngest breakout age at 18.7 years old, which yes. is in the 95th percentile. This man was coming right out of high school. He said, fuck it. I'm going to be a God right, right out of there. So what do you think about that? Yeah. That, I mean, that, that means a lot, right? I mean, you, you listed off his stats last year and they're not sexy. I mean, 43 receptions on 611 yards. That's not, that's not exactly um, exciting. Yeah. But, but then when you look at, you know, you dig a little bit deeper into it and he was playing with an absolutely horrendous quarterback. Um, <laughs> we talked about catch rate before. I think um, P uh, pro football focus had him at a 30% a, a true catch rate as in uh, like in terms of the, uh, the quarterback's um, accuracy. Uh -huh. And when you're playing with absolute garbage, I think he was playing with a true freshman last mm -hmm. year at TCU. And Unfortunately, that, that does really bad things for a player. Um, yeah. We talked about uh, Jerry, Judy playing, Jerry Judy playing with a guy like Tua last year. Well, this year when Rager was playing, he was playing with absolute trash. So it doesn't tell the whole story. You have to kind of peel back the onion a little bit. But um, I think uh, Jalen Rager, I, I mean, he's kind of – he's been in a discussion with, with a lot of people's top fives um, in terms of, like, where you're ranking these wide receivers. And – yeah even though he had a bad year um, and I would argue he didn't have the best combine. He didn't, didn't have a bad combine, but he didn't have mm -hmm. the best combine. But one of the things that was notable is that um, at, at the, at the combine, when these players are up and they're, they're on the podiums, uh, Jalen Rager was the kind of guy where like, you have to do like the double take. Like you remember DK Metcalf last year yeah. where like he was just absolutely chiseled. He's like an Adonis. That's <laughs> the kind of fitness level that a guy like Jalen Rager is. And even when you look at certain things like his BMI, um, he's got a 28.7 BMI, which that that's when you're upper, like closer to the 30, especially for a slighter player, um, that makes a big difference. Um, what's interesting though, so I was looking at the TC website and right now at the call line, he, he weighed in at 206 pounds at 5'11". Mm -hmm. um, last year at the start of the season, he weighed in at 195 pounds. That means he put on 11 pounds and probably 11 pounds of muscle, just the way that this guy looks. Um, a lot of people thought that he was going to run a sub 4440 at the combine. He ended up running a 447, which mm -hmm. is still pretty good. It's the 74th percentile, but apparently he was clocked at going 429 last spring. So, so about a year ago at this time, he was clocked at 429. Again, though, he was about 11 pounds lighter. So, uh -huh. it's one of those things where he may have been in competition with like a Henry Ruggs in terms of, okay, who's going to blow up the combine with the 40? But I'm kind of okay with that. If you're losing like, um, what is it? A 10th of a second 
on your 40, but you're putting on 11 pounds of muscle, I think that's what's going to help you win at the next level. I mean, if you're slight, if you get hit, I mean, like, like look at John Ross. He can't play because he can't stay healthy. Yeah. If you get a guy like a Jalen Rager who's thick, 28 BMI, he can stay healthy and he can make a big difference on your football team. Yeah, 100%. His ADP on FFPC has been going up. He's going, he's coming. So up pretty much means he's going from being a pick from 246 to around 226. So he's rising up there. Now, where do you find the ideal landing spot for a guy like Jalen Rager? Well, we talked about it before. I mean, are we, am I allowed to say Green Bay for every one of these wide receivers? That's that the count? best landing spot. Does that count as the best landing spot? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, like a, a, a team like Green Bay would make a huge, huge difference um, for a guy like Jalen Rager. But Rager is the kind of guy who doesn't necessarily have the same pedigree as a guy like Judy or Lamb. So he might not be drafted into day two. And once you get into that that second round, honestly, that's when teams can start trading up. If if they have him, if the teams have him as a day one value or just skill set, and he's able to, and he falls to day two, honestly, at that point, you can just pretty much roll the dice in, t- in terms of, okay, who wants him the most? Who's yeah. willing to maybe trade up to get him? And he could really land on any any team, to be okay. honest. I know that's kind of a cop-out of an answer, but <laughs> I would be cool. Like, What if he was on a Minnesota, right? They kind of have a need at this point, right? They've got the, the aging Adam Thielen. They just traded the way Stephon Diggs. They have... Um, so in terms of their picks, they have two first round picks. They've got the 22nd pick overall, which I think is what they got from Buffalo. I want yeah, to say, I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So they've got the 25th pick and then they have the 26th pick in round two. So I bet you, I could see Jalen Rager falling probably to early to mid round two. Um, mm-hmm. So they'd have to trade up, but they have the ammunition. They have quite a few picks. They've got, yeah. uh, let's see, just going on the draft board. They've got two, six rounds, two and three seventh round picks as well as their, their, fourth and their fifth round pick. So if they wanted to trade up to get a Rager, they could absolutely do it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, were, we were talking about the tie God to Rod Taylor before we started recording here. And I, I was saying how much I'm an apologist for him. I'm kind of a Kirk Cousins apologist as well. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is quietly good. People just absolutely shit all over him because he's not, he's not flashy. Not and he, he's just, he puts up friggin' yards. He puts up 4,000 yard seasons, almost 28 to 30 touchdowns every single year. Pretty much like clockwork. And yet I think it's just because he gets paid so much money. Yeah. People think, okay, because you get paid as, as high as like a Russell Wilson or because you get paid more than Aaron Rodgers, therefore you should be as good as him. It doesn't always translate that way. But if yeah. I still consider him absolutely, when talking about real life NFL quarterbacks, I would absolutely have him in my top 10. And if I was starting a franchise today, if I could draft a guy like Kirk Cousins later and have him as a top 10 quarterback, I would do it any day of the week. So I would be absolutely comfortable with a guy like Jalen Rager falling to a Minnesota. I, I think that'd be a great fit. Yeah. Most people probably hate on Kirk Cousins because now they're just such a run heavy team as well. It's like, Oh, he didn't, yeah, did he really true. bring them to the playoffs or was it Dalvin cook? But then Dalvin cook will just break his leg 12 weeks in the season or eight weeks. Just like he always does. He Don't loves bring him. on that hate. Don't bring on that negative energy. Mm-hmm. Come on, Nick. Yeah. Be good right, now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hate Dalvin cook, but that's okay. <laughs> I actually like uh, Kirk Cousins. I think yeah. Kirk Cousins is a fine quarterback, but everyone's going to hate him. I mean, they paid Jared Goff so much money and people aren't even slandering Jared Goff, but Kirk Cousins gets all the hate. You know, you don't like that. Well, yeah. I mean, people are starting to, uh, people were high on Jared Goff after his rookie season. I mean, his rookie season, he was like dazed and confused, right? Pretty much. But <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like a Jeff Fisher write-off kind of season. But the fact that he doesn't have this absolute electric offense anymore is, is starting to realize, okay, maybe he is just a glorified game manager. I would listen. I would take Kirk Cousins over Jared Goff any day of the week for my quarterback. Yeah, as would I. So we're to go back to talk about this chart that I talked about last time: rookie wide receiver hit rates by draft position. So we both agree, most likely he is going to be a second round pick. Correct? <laughs> yes, I think okay. so. Yeah. So if he goes into the second round, he has the potential to be a top 12 wide receiver, a 3% chance to be a top 24, which is a wide receiver two, 21% chance to be a wide receiver three, top 36 finish is a 29% chance and top 48 per, uh, finish is a 41% chance. And then if he somehow falls into the third round is going to be significantly lower 2% chance. He finishes top 12, top 24 is a 9% chance. Top 36 is an 18% chance and top 48 is a 20% chance. So I personally don't think the third round numbers matter because he should go 
into the second round. And then if you look for year two, it goes up. But we talk about this in every video. This coronavirus stuff is going to screw these wide receivers where normally I think that they could hit their year one and potentially be a top 24 guy. I think that this year we are going to see many wide receivers that most people think will be very good, have the potential in regular fantasy leagues to finish inside the top 20 that just simply will not even cusp that or get even close to it because not being able to practice, not being able to even train with your quarterback, not being able to talk to the coaches unless you're talking on the phone to them, all really impacts them. And people are going to start talking about this soon. No one I've noticed has really been talking about this, but this is the most important thing because you look at the wide receiver hit rate last year, it was a million times higher than normal. And this year it is going to be a million times lower than normal. I don't think any of these guys are going to be very successful this year, even if you're talking about a guy like CeeDee Lamb and Judy. But for the future, they're going to be great. So <laughs> They're going to be great. Well, and I absolutely 100% agree with you. The one caveat I would say with a guy like a Jalen Rager is that if he gets drafted in the second or even the third round, I mean yeah. – Let's be honest. We talked about it before. There's so many quality wide receivers yeah. that it might just naturally push them down to the third round. They might be a round one or even a round two talent, but they mm-hmm. might be drafted in round three. It just, it's yeah. about replacement value, right? But the thing about a guy like Jalen Ranger is he, was retur- like he returned punts in college, and he, I believe he had one or two um, punt returns in college. Yeah. The guy is electric with the ball in his hands. And he, he, because he's able to play on special teams, I kind of close my eyes and I envision, okay, what kind of role could Jalen Rager play in his rookie season, right? And I could see him in a punt return type of role. That's just like the kind of body type he is. He's quick. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe, yes, he had the four four seven speed, but maybe he continues to work on that. Maybe he shaves off a little bit of time on his 40 and yeah. his breakaway speed. Um, if he's able to get on the field and show in the punt return game that he can make a difference to the team, maybe that'll open coach's eyes a little bit and say, hey, maybe I need to get this guy on the field a little bit more. And maybe they start playing him in, in the backfield a little bit, give him slants, just get the ball in his hand, um, screen plays, like those sort those types of plays. And the more that he gets on the field in those types of situations, if he shows that he can be productive and get yards, get touchdowns, um, set the team up in good field position on punt returns, that builds trust with the coach. And that'll also mean, hey, anytime we can get the ball in Jalen Rager's hands, he's going to make a difference for our team. Therefore, we want to put him on the field. And guess what, guys? When he's on the friggin' field, he's going to get you fantasy points. That matters. That makes yeah. a difference. And that's actually why Jalen Rager is my wide receiver three in this class as of today before the draft is because he's the kind of guy who we talked about there's a lower probability of any of these guys hitting um, in their first year. Yeah. I think that he might be one of the um, – those examples of the guys that that can hit and make a big difference on your team. Listen, if you play in one of those cockamamie leagues that has like return yards and stuff like that, um, you want a guy like Jalen Rager. Let me tell you. Yeah, no, I don't know why anyone's playing in those leagues, if I'm being honest with you. But uh, when you were talking about returning kicks, I mean, that helped a guy like Julian Edelman, a guy like Wes Welker. Oh, yeah. Look at their career. I mean, you're a Patriots fan. You know those guys. So, yeah, Yeah. that's 100% something that got those guys on the field and gave them their chance to play. So if Rager Mm -hmm. is just like that, or obviously different build completely. I mean, Edelman's probably like 5'4". Similar. Not actually, but (laughs) they're they're much shorter guys. I think 5'11". I think it's the same height, actually. I, although oh, really? Edelman might see, yeah, you know, it, you know what? I gotta look. I gotta look. Okay. Next, uh, well, I mean, Wes Welker seemed pretty short, if I'm being honest with you. Wes. Oh, they absolutely are. Absolutely. Um, Wes Welker's yeah, so five nine. Five nine. Yeah, Welker's a little bit more stout. Yeah, Julian Edelman's five ten. So Jalen Rager's only got an inch on him. Uh, Julian Edelman, 198 pounds. It's not a, not a horrible comp. Now that you actually mention it, I kind of like it. I kind of like yeah. it. I hope he ends up being as good as Julian Edelman. I mean, he won't oh, have a guy like Brady throwing him the ball. He'll have some scrub yeah. like Aaron Rodgers potentially. But, you know what I like though too about like these smaller school guys is that they kind of have that, just the fact that we're even talking about a smaller school player at this point in the draft process means that they've differentiated themselves already, right? You have to assume the coaches see that. And if you're, if you're able to be like the diamond in the rough um, as an example, that matters. And it just shows, Hey, maybe this guy can come and he'll be a good player on my team. And maybe he'll become a Julian Edelman. It's not going to happen in the first year, but maybe three years down the road when these guys are 24, 25 years old, shit, maybe you're drafting them in round three, round four of your, of your redraft leagues. Who knows? Yeah. Now where are you looking to draft this guy in a uh, rookie draft? 
Um, probably I would say around like the one eight, one nine, one ten. So if I'm if if I'm just mocking it out of my head, right? We we've talked about this a bunch. So I would probably go for argument argument say, let's go f- the top five are your running backs, with number five being Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Number yeah. six would probably be a guy like Lamb, then a Judy, and then that's where I would start considering do I want to draft Jalen Rager? Do I want to draft Keyshawn Vaughn? Who Vaughn, I mean, we didn't talk about him, but he's kind of got that three down back capability yeah. and the right in the right opportunity in the right team, he could be uh, a pretty solid uh, running back too. Mm-hmm. And he's a guy that you could plug into your team pretty much week one. So okay. I would, that's where I would start considering um, a Jalen Rager, but this is a part of the draft where it's going to be very landing spot, spot dependent. If a guy like Justin Jefferson happens to land in like the perfect spot, I may end up putting Justin Jefferson above Jalen Rager. So it, it does matter ultimately, but that's probably like the mid to late first round is where you want to start considering a guy like Jalen Rager. Okay. And just so you guys know, we're talking about single quarterback and two quarterbacks, super flex. You just move yes. two spots back pretty much because then two and Joe two or three. go in front of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Two or three. Yeah. In case some people love Justin Herbert, who's going to be a bust, even though he's going to probably get ended up getting drafted oh, with the dolphins and I'll be sad, but it's okay. So you got anything else here? Oh yeah. I, you better, you next time, next time I'm on, it's going to be maybe after the draft and you're going to have yourself a Justin Herbert Jersey. No, I, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll burn it. I'll buy it and burn it. I can't stand that guy. So God. you got anything else here on uh, Mr. Jalen? No, love him. Love Jalen Rager. Okay. So thank you guys all for watching this video. Make sure to check out all of Shane's links down below in the description. Make sure to check out the other videos we did together as well. We did four running backs. This is going to be four wide receivers. There's one coming up later in the week, Justin Jefferson. So thank you guys all for watching. It really means a lot. Make sure to check out Shane. Like I said, I love you all. Have a great rest of your guys' day and goodbye.